This is the Kingston S18. It is one of the first electric unicycle ever to be equipped with a suspension system. And in case if you're wondering why that may be a good idea, I could think of a few good reasons. I just got this wheel and I'm still acclimating to it. My review will come but this week, my initial impression of the Kingston S18. And five reasons why you may want this wheel. If you thought you already made up your mind about which of the suspension wheel you want to get, I am here this week to throw a few more monkey wrenches into your decisions. Are you ready? Roll the intro. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified of new episodes and stay till the end for a preview of what's coming up next. Not long ago, electric unicycle used to look like this, or this. They were straightforward devices, somewhat underpowered by today's standard, but people loved them anyway, and over the years, both the motor and wheel size had grown, and so have their capabilities. But the addition of an effective suspension system had been on the wish list of many EUC riders, especially those who had a bad knee. And that wish was finally granted through the release of the revolutionary batch of electric unicycle this year, including this wheel. First of all, shout out to eWheel for sending me this pre-production version of the Kingston S18 for review purposes. As you can see, this wheel has seen some mileage. It is close, but not 100% just yet. There's some looseness to the panels, as well as some internal rubbing, all of which have been addressed in the production version of this wheel, according to Kingston. And despite the fact that this particular demo have obviously seen some rough trails, none of it could take away from its striking design. And I still think that this is the best looking electric unicycle I have ever seen. And that brings us to number one, design. Hold on, I, this is not gonna do. I've done some beautiful product pens for a few other electric unicycles, including ones for the V11, which is S18's main competitor. I mean, I think it's really a disservice for Kingston for me to showcase this wheel in its present beat up demo form, but I think I have a solution to that. We got ourselves a production version of the Kingston S18. It is especially important for the S18 since I think that it is one of the most striking electric unicycle ever made. It was a leap of faith on the part of Kingston to go with such a radical design and honestly when I first saw the leaked photo, I thought that it was a prototype and that there is no way that Kingston would ever release something as radical as this. Unlike prior gen EUCs, where the case act as little more than a container for batteries and a bunch of parts, the semi-open enclosure on the Kingston S18 is a celebration of what this wheel does. The sweeping front panels gave the wheel a sleek tall profile while also concealed two long slim banks of battery packs. Up top the wheel narrows and pitched sharply back to a shallow peak where the trolley handle is concealed. The control board is somehow hidden below this incredibly thin slice. Further back the case starts to open up and showcase the vertical suspension arms which ingeniously also accommodated the trolley rods. And it all culminated in the trellis pivot arms sculpted to present the shock body almost like the turbillion on a mechanical watch which pops in and out as the mechanism absorbs shock. Gone were the decorative LED and Bluetooth speakers, cheap addition that I always thought detracted from the EUC's image as a serious performance machine. Instead, we have an unapologetically beautiful wheel that not only revolutionized how an EUC worked, but also what it can look like. You can expect a whole lot of attention from the general public whenever you ride this wheel and although they still probably wouldn't know what it is, if there's a wheel that can be cool, the Kingston S18 is likely it. Alright, enough with the gawking. This is a wheel after all. Let's see how it rides. Alright, I gotta be straight with you. Wow, look at that tree fell over. 
Because of some minor shipping snafu, this wheel was actually sent to my parents' place in Queens and I rode it all the way back, so I already have about 10 miles on this wheel. And not to mention the fact that since I already had some experience riding the V11, I have somewhat acclimated to that sense of disengagement with the wheel axle. The initial impression of this wheel is pretty positive. It doesn't have as much that sense of bounce. I actually thought that this wheel would be bouncier because it's supposed to have more travel. Both sets of wheels have progressive suspension as in it gets stiffer when you get to the end of the travel. However, it's more pronounced on this particular wheel so it doesn't have to go as far to cushion you the same amount. So in general, when it hits a bump like that, it absorbs it without as much drama, I guess. I was surprised at how maneuverable the V11 is. On this, I actually don't feel surprised because the pedal height as well as how this wheel generally feels, it's actually really similar to the other 18-inch wheels that I've ridden in the past. Whoa! Jesus, that's scary. So there was a huge hole in the grass just now and I kind of fell right into, whoa, into it. Um, I, had, I still had to get used to the feeling of how to hop a curb. That and learning how to ride downstairs. I haven't figured out how to do that yet because I feel like I'm gonna fall and hurt myself. Those kids were making out and I totally ruined it for them. <laughs> yeah, the suspension on this is definitely nice. You get the bounce, but it's, it's, it's much tighter. It doesn't feel as kind of floaty. Let's quickly run down the specification. The S18 carries a 2200 watt motor, which is likely the same one that they had on the updated version of XTXL, which I wrote when I was in Taiwan earlier this year. And it has a battery capacity of 1100 watt hour, which is unfortunately one of the smallest battery size of all the current gen flagship electric unicycle. And based on conversation with few of the people that have production version of this wheel, you likely will see around 40 to 50 miles of range Again, that is depending on how hard you ride this wheel, as well as how big of a guy or a gal you are. Like all other King Song wheels, they max out at 31 miles per hour. And based on past experience, King Song tend to be a little bit optimistic on their speedometer. So, in fact, you will likely see a max speed of slightly lower than that, so around 29 to 30, depending. Which is to say that this is not a speed wheel, at which point I'm sure all the Gatway riders are starting to wander off. But honestly, at least for me, speed above 31 miles per hour probably represents less than 10% of my riding, and especially in urban downtown areas, I rarely see myself going above it either. Which bring us to the second reason, ergonomic. Despite it being thicker than the V11, it's much more sculpted and shaped to fit your legs better. The wheel flares out at the midpoint, but dips back right where your shin is. When you grip the wheel with your legs, it actually feels incredibly thin because literally you're right up against a vertical slider with nothing in between. It almost feels a little bit too thin and that's why I added additional padding towards the top. Just an additional layer of half inch neoprene, not too hard to do. A section of the shell was also carved away to accommodate your foot. So if you'd like to grip the wheel, you can do so without adding any pads. I think King Sang consulted with Kuji doing the design of this wheel, which made the design of the shell incredibly ergonomic. So the only complaints I could think of is that, um, well, Kuji is sort of a very skinny guy with very thin ankles. And me, on the other hand, I sort of have to uh, suck in my tummy whenever I hit record. The way the pads is configured on this wheel, when I push my feet against it, there's a part of the pad that actually dig into my ankle. Now, this is a complaint that I've heard from a few other tester of the uh, demo pre-production wheel. If you're getting a production run wheel, they have increased the thickness of the pad so that it's not as much of an issue. But again, if you have a thicker calf than I do and it's still an issue for you, you can pretty easily add padding, which I'm going to do on the pre-production wheel just so that I can have an easier time riding this wheel. 
Speaking of customization, this is probably the most customizable EUC around. And because of the configuration of the shell and the fact that it moves as a whole single unit, you have quite a bit of option when it comes to attaching any sort of speed pad to this wheel. The top is also pretty flat. If you want to make a custom seat to go on top of it, it probably wouldn't be hard to do. Given how cushy the ride of this wheel is with the suspension, it will be very comfortable to sit down. Then there are the myriads of ways to tune the suspension. Positive, negative, rebound speed, if anything, the option almost made the S18 too finicky since there are so many parameters and dials you can play with. And if you really want to go further, since this is an off-the-shelf shock, as long as you have the correct dimensions, you can upgrade the shock itself with anything else you like that fits to further customize a ride. And that brings us to the biggest selling point of the S18. Even from the little bit of time I have riding this wheel, I'm about 90% certain that this is the best suspension system you can possibly get on this current gen of electric unicycle releases. As more travel and they utilize a shock unit that is modular and much more robust, the stock shock also accommodate a much greater range of customization positive, negative, and rebound speed, which you don't get on the V11. And the pivot base structure also mean that the pedal can be set lower than that of the double piston type on the V11. More importantly, the design also reduced the amount of unsprung weight to just the wheel and motor, which aside from reducing the amount of vibration transmitted to more of the wheel components, probably a good thing for sensitive electronics, but more importantly, it increases the wheel's ability to react to surface conditions and directly contribute to the increase in traction. And this is the most important aspect of having effective suspension system. And I don't mean comfort, because we only have a single wheel and one contact patch. Making sure that one contact point is firmly planted to the ground at all times is what get you that better traction and for a single wheel again, it's huge. And better traction translates directly to improved speed, torque, and braking ability. And I can certainly feel hints of it even from my short time with the S18 so far. impression I get riding the Kingston S18. This is a wheel that is capable of things that I totally did not think is possible. And so far, every single curb, potholes, rock, roots, anything that have tossed in the path of the S18, it had handled without so much of a shake. This is a wheel that pushes you to experiment and try things you would never dare on anything else. And if that's not the perfect formula for some weekend, good time, I don't know what is. The Kingston S18 is a very different kind of electric unicycle. It's something that we have never seen before, and I don't think any of us have ever begun to figure out what it's truly capable of, and that is the most exciting thing about this wheel. You heard it like oh man, look at the time. I somehow managed to waste another 10 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and check out the link to my Patreon page if you'd like to support my work. And as much as we all love Electric Unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheels is to grow as a community. So tell your friends and teach them how to ride and get them hooked. <laughs> In the following weeks, I will attempt to push the S18 to its limits and see what it could do. And of course, put together a review of my thought on this wheel as well as a comparison to the V11. Until then, stay tuned.